All right, folks. I don't know where Charles is. This is a Where's Charles uh, podcast. All right. We don't know where he is. He's somewhere in the southeast of this country. You can't tell by the trees? <laughs> no, I can't. Let's see, let's see the trees. Some, are... some, some arborist in our community is going to be like, yeah, that is a southeastern. I don't, I don't know. I actually don't know. <laughs> I haven't even looked back at the tree. Hey, y'all. Calling it from north of Atlanta, Georgia. We are going to be talking to API voters. We just had a good meeting with um, B. Wynn, who is a former candidate for Secretary of State in Georgia. Was was slated to be a part of the, the Stacey Abrams um, takeover that didn't happen, but is now working for Raphael Warnock. Okay. Uh, leading API uh, reach for him. Um, and also working for the AAPI Victory Fund, which is another group that we're affiliated with. So we just got a bunch of intel on Georgia. It was really good to get to get some some background here. Ooh, there's a lot of work to be done out here, man. Okay, wow. so let me let me let me start here with this map because you know I'd like a good map. I'm a, you do. It's, a, it's October 4th, everybody. It's almost 12 o'clock Pacific time. This is the presidential map of 2020, 2020. Um, and we start our foundation, our foundations trips, our learning tours to the South with, by showing people this map because we start in Atlanta and we say, Hey, here's something unique about Georgia on this map, the 2020 presidential map. There's something unique about it. Uh, and so then we give people a minute to to think about it. So I'm going to give you 10 seconds. <laughs> That's good. You're going to give people some time to, what is unique about Georgia on this map? It's good. It's a, it's a learning tour preview. Exactly. So uh, people, it's not, a, it's not a tough question, uh, but it, here's, here's the answer. It's the only state out of the 48 that are in the contiguous U S it's the only state that is uh, of one color and it's surrounded entirely by states of the other color. So it's the only blue state that touches only red. There are no red states that touch only blue. So there's yeah. there's nothing unique or I mean, not, nothing uh, uh, necessarily defining about touching another state. But the reality is that touching other states often means commerce moves across them. There's cultural traditions that cross state lines. There's people go to schools. Um, all kinds of things. So Georgia is the only island. It's the only mm -hmm. island out of all 48 that do touch other states. So it's it's uniquely of one thing. It's like a, a beachhead. And in 2020, Biden won by 11,000 votes that Trump Trump's still, still looking for. And John Ossoff and <laughs> Raphael Warnock uh, won. 11,730? <laughs> it's let's look it up man but uh we're not I'm which is one up. more than we have that's what he said <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh and then Idiot. warnock and Ossoff won and they flipped the debt they they flipped the senate with those two yep. amazing victories um so it's a it's a really important interesting place and we've had the chance to travel with some folks for Wait, hold on hold on hold on just a, a step further on that it is so what that says is it bucks the trend of the states around it. Um, it, go, it, it, it carves its own path. It resists some of the, um, the voter suppression that's true in all those states that are around it. Right? Including, including in that state. Yeah. Yeah. Including in the state. Yeah. So, so it's unique in so many ways and is it perseveres beyond so many headwinds to, to have that level of success in the South. That's a big deal because it's, it's generational pressure, right? It's systemic multi-generational pressure that it has um, uh, come back from and then sustained energy from. So what did you say? 11,780 votes. Yeah, that's exactly right. Charles. That's exactly right. That's, that's right, what man. that's what Trump was looking for. One more looking for. Yeah. Which is one more than we have. 
We're looking for eleven thousand. <laughs> that's all we need. That's which is one more than we have. Very clearly saying, like, we don't have enough. <laughs> He's a, such an idiot. Oh such my! An, which is why JD Vance is so scary. But anyway, I don't want to go back to JD Vance. Okay, oh. so 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 Georgia. Right. So Georgia has, is like this incredible place uh, in terms of a beachhead in the American Southeast and part of our Southern push to try to flip these vote suppressed states. Um, and when it's like a war, when you take a space, you don't want to lose that space back. All right. So yeah. so we the, the in the in the statewide elections since 2020, We've won two Senate races, and then we won another one with Warnock in 2022. And you won the presidential race that Dems did in 2020. So we want to keep it. So you're there. Uh, I assume that you're in Georgia because the J.D. Vance bus tour is happening uh, that today oh. and tomorrow. So you're on the bus. I I know you're like secretly a mole. We secretly we're a following. Mole. Actually, we're following behind the bus and we're relaying location to the Harris campaign. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, we're, like, we're in Georgia because um, Kamala Harris candidacy lit Georgia up on the map, and it a, a lot of a lot of what was going on on the left was um, I wouldn't say ignoring Georgia, but it placed Georgia way lower on the party li party list. Uh, some of that is because there was no big top of ticket candidate. There was no Warnock and Ossoff, no governor race, no important u.s house race that was that seemed like it was flippable so georgia sank down pretty low on the state party list some of that is because of the losses because stacy abrams didn't make it and others um on the state level it's also because of what has happened with fair fight and the shrinking of fair fight and um them letting go of a bunch of their staff i think I think the last report was like 60% of their staff. And that was at the beginning of this calendar year. Um, and then New Georgia project around the same time. What was hit with this massive thing that happened with their leaders. So both the, at the top on the, you know, the electoral side and then on the grassroots and Georgia has fallen back backwards since in priority and also and and just effectiveness and getting out the vote since Warnock won in December of 2022. So let's put it in the, in the, let's focus on the second half of this. You, the, you, you took us through some kind of strategic reasons why the state maybe isn't as, isn't as high of a priority for the national Democrats this year. Then you also, then you moved into what we'll call kind of organizational realities. Okay. Yeah. On the, on the ground there. Now we have spent a lot of time in Georgia and you have spent a lot of time in Georgia. And so you have great relationships there. We've built them and there's no state we've probably worked in more over the last right. six years. So yeah. I want to, I want to talk about that organizational dimension. Maybe Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Bob, yeah. Those she two are neck and neck. Correct you. Yeah. 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 They're both neck and neck. Um, I want to talk about the organizational dimensions because I want to put this in the context of common power and the way that we yeah. are, we're trying to, to not get caught in some of these undertoes of challenges. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's step back again. Georgia, Georgia becomes a, this big shiny success story in 2018, 2020 for the Democrats driven by the, the very visible national leadership of Stacey Abrams. Okay. Right. She founds new Georgia project, leaves that alone, runs for governor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> runs for governor in 2018 loses narrowly then yeah, they found fair loses fight. And be, and, uh i think fair fight was maybe right before that but but I, she loses and, and still maintains her her presence in the same way that beto did in texas so her and beto both lose in 2018 even though there's this blue wave in 2018 we lose sig significant governor races in florida and in texas and in Atlanta, when it felt like we had momentum at our backs. And it's it's easy to forget that because of the numbers in the house. But they take their money and they they turn that right back into organizing power. You're you're right. And they sure. get ready for the next elections. Yep. Right. Um so Abrams, Beto, um yep. do this. And then uh Stacey Abrams runs again in 28, 2022 and doesn't yep. do as well. 
Brian Kemp's a yeah. stronger candidate. Abrams has got some challenges in her campaign, but Warnock wins. And we, of course, yeah. help help with that. Um, now, to sustain this energy, this progress is a difficult endeavor. So what we know, although we're not in the weeds on any of this, is that a couple of the leading organizations there, Fair Fight and New Georgia Project, have hit some real some real headwinds financially, organizationally, structurally, and so they've been knocked back a little bit. Uh, and yeah. so that's been that's part of the challenge you're talking about there. When I see Texas, I see Texas kind of not having hit those per se. Texas is a little bit more on the move now. All right, but they are right. they're, they're lagging behind Georgia. So from well, your close relationships that you you you've got in Georgia and the amount of time we're spending there and I, we'll get to what you're doing right now but what what are the, the what are the takeaway lessons for what's a lesson or two for us at common power that is yeah. that is a takeaway well I, I, let me go let me go one more on the on the current state the current state also includes um, a lot of the grassroots power leaving the democratic side since the Gaza mm. situation so so you get you lose a bunch of the grassroots organizing strength after Gaza. You lose a lot of NGP stuff, like New Georgia Project. Those are those are pretty far left grassroots organizers. You lose um, uh, HRC. You lose some um, some other nonprofits that are that's the human rights are, human rights campaign. Or? Yeah, yeah. You lose some of these these folks that that, that have a good presence of um, new new um gen zers and also millennials have been in the game for a long time you start to lose them after gaza and right. when harris enters there's this like slow tiptoe back towards her okay but it's still very slow so that that is a that's a part of of this entire thing is is the the gaza situation is where the left loses some of our saliency with with activists and that is also why you see Harris prioritizing conservatives, people in the middle, you know, flippable, undecided voters, um, Republicans, suburban people, because there's we're so far gone from from young millennials and Gen Zers and and more people who are who are further left because of because of Gaza. And so they're like, okay, where do we where do we make up ground? Do we go this easier path or do we try the harder path of gaining back our base so that that's that's where that's where common power enters in right now having worked in the state before we came here for the primary through b win who was supposed to be the um, next secretary of state she's a young uh, vietnamese um she was a, a state senator she was she's the, she was a state senator in a district that was majority african-american mm -hmm. and so she's seen as being able to work across these racial differences that are kind of new within the, the political landscape of, of, of America. So she's still active here, but that's, that's where our, our hooks are, are through. Um, so a bunch of the, what we're hearing now is, a, is people realizing one that Kamala Harris is not Joe Biden. Um, he's both <laughs> uh, more tied to, the black and brown communities while also being more moderate. I think, I think the other part is that more liberal organizations, further left organizations now have come to realize that they have to back um, Kamala in order for, for us to defeat Trump. And they, they've understood, you know, you see that, that, that Muslim group out of Michigan saying Emerge. they're going to back. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They're going to, they're going to, yeah. um, back Kamala Harris because they'd rather debate with her than to have the alternative happen. So I think all of these grassroots organizations now are saying, let's get under, let's get behind her. Let's, let's mobilize. And yet it's so late. Uh huh. It is, uh -huh. you know, we're 30 days out now. We are super late in the game and it's tough now, now that they've been saying, you know, fuck the Dems, <laughs> you know, they've been like, you know, no to Joe Biden. They they've gotten their people mobilized to be anti-Biden. Now they're like, okay, the leadership understands the strategic value. Now let's go mobilize volunteers. And now they're going and saying, hey, let's go do door knocking. And their people are like, no, no, we're not we're not coming because you told us, you know, you sold us this. So it's a it's a tough slog. 
So we come in and they are, you know, we get a, I get that phone call or text message from B and another, um, another person on the state ledge in the Senate. And they're like, Charles, what are your plans for mobilizing in Georgia? And I'm like, we don't have plans <laughs> until just now. And this so was a couple of weeks up. ago, a couple of weeks this ago. Was, or... This was a few weeks ago. Yeah. So in the matter of weeks, I'd say uh, it was early September. We have, we're, we're, we've got two trips to Georgia. Um, because all of our team leads were tasked around the country, Ben and Puya personally are taking leadership of these two teams. We've got uh, a couple dozen that are going on this trip right now. Um, this is one that's specifically connected to the AANHPI outreach in Georgia. It is the beginning, really, of them starting to get their legs under them. Harris campaign's involved. The AAPI Victory Fund is involved. A bunch of state ledge people are involved. And we're organizing just north of Atlanta. And then in a, a couple of weeks, Puya is leading the team of at least 50 now. At least 50 that are going to be knocking doors here uh, in a couple of weeks. So, so let's, I want to yeah. drill down a little bit here without, and we're not, look, we're not, we're not, to everybody listening to this podcast, I'm just trying to hit, I want to, I want to have Charles give us a couple bullet points without, without deep explanation. What's the top three bullet points that these folks reached out to us, to you, to us, to come do this work? Uh, well, I mean, all that background to say that they can't, <laughs> they can't organize people they used to, like they used to. Right. So why do they it's pick tough. us? Why us? They can't find volunteers. Yeah. Cause they know that we can deliver. Um, that's, that's what we do everywhere around the country. Our, our, our reputation is such that everyone who we've worked with has spread the word around the country that we can be relied upon to bring volunteers. So, so B reaches out because she's like, I need numbers at this launch. And, um, unfortunately, one of the things that happens is that there's, the organizations that have the biggest brands, they bring money and they bring elected officials and cameras, but they don't bring volunteers. They don't bring hmm. people. Sounds so just like, like a, the civil rights movement and Dr. King. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of there's a lot of people who bring all of these these highly visible individuals who want to speak at a rally, but they don't know how to fill the rally with people. And we're one of the few organizations who can fill a, fill a rally, rally with, with people. So that's, that's like reason number one. Reason number two is that our people will knock on doors and they'll be really good at it. And we're high quality volunteers. We're not going to come in and have all these demands. There's a, there's a big rally tomorrow. And I'm hear, hearing that anybody worth anything wants to come and address the crowd. And they want their speakers to introduce other more important speakers. And they want their logo on the flyers and the advertisements. And they want their logos, you know, their colors and their, all these requirements they're making to people. And some of these are not even local organizations. These are national orgs. These are DC, DC orgs, some of it's the Dems. And we don't make those requirements. We're here to do the work. Like we, we say we're here to get to work and we actually do that. And that's, that's, that's like, that's what, that's all that we do. And the last thing is that, you know, all the way through, we follow the lead of the, the folks on the ground. And it's so funny because I'm saying these things and I could imagine someone else saying that, but we, we actually do, you know, when I show up tomorrow, I'm not going to speak. Um, I'm not going to ask to speak. And we've got two dozen people that are going to just go to the place that they're asking us to go. The neighborhoods are asking, we're not going to tell them we think these voters are more important to this election. We're not going to tell them how to plan their rally. We're going to show up and we're going to do the hard work and we're going to knock on doors until they tell us to stop. And that's the common power difference. Is there a dimension to this that is kind of underlying your, the things you're saying that I want to ask you about? I, I want to ask you about it. Is there a dimension to this that, we, yeah, get to the point. What's the point you're trying to make, David? Well, we don't. We don't. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm we, joking. Go ahead. We don't. Uh, we don't litigate the particular issue positions, right of, right? of of a candidates, and so we're not in the weeds over this position in the Middle East, this position on health care, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. We don't make sure that they're gonna they're gonna 
they're going to sign on to our values. Um, I don't know. I, we're in a privileged position in politics right now, actually, where it's about math and it's not about parsing out the nuanced positions of people. I think it's going to become more difficult when we get past this this era where we have to actually do some vetting and tell people what we stand for um, on every issue. But I think that some folks who remember how politics used to be still do that. They still operate in that same way. And that's just, that's not where we are. But I, you know, this happened, it's interesting, something happened in our, in our, in our Slack that was along these same lines mm -hmm. where um, in our volunteer I'm Slack channel, yeah. Did you see that? I don't know yeah. Yeah. But it. I just yeah. was going to explain it. Slack is the internal, it's the mechanism by oh, which our, volu our volunteers and we communicate with each other. It's like a big text, text chain. Yeah. It's a, yeah, a big kind of Facebook page or whatever, but it's all internal. So somebody started talking about Gaza, you know, somebody, somebody brought up, uh, there's this new book out. Someone's talking about Gaza and, um, it's interesting because our, our community has gone from, older, retired, um, still liberal, but more white Seattleites to now that we've gone national. And especially since we've brought in um, younger, like, like millennials from Vote Save America, the views on something like Gaza are mm -hmm. not just one sided, you know? Mm -hmm. And so somebody, but still liberals have this thing where like they, they, they think everyone agrees. <laughs> Well, my position is the most reasonable one. And so, of course, we all believe this, right? <laughs> so somebody posted about that. And then somebody immediately was like, they took the other side. They took the other side on Gaza. And it was like the beginning of, okay, this is going to be a fight. And everyone listening to this probably knows where this fight could have gone. And immediately, we were like, this is not what this is for. Our volunteer channel, where people celebrate our work, is about our work. It's about knocking on doors. It's about getting Democrats elected this cycle. And it's about voting rights and fighting for that it's, and supporting each other and building community. It's about focusing on the things that unite us. It is not about deb deb debating all the things that divide us because there's so many things. And yes, that connects to how we deal with partners. And that's what people love about. That's one of the things people love about it. Yeah. Well, I, on the learning tour that we just did with educators, Dr. Scott and I, there was a there was a person on the trip who just said, hey, I'm really in, in curious that you guys, you guys haven't talked about Gaza here on yeah. the trip. And is that, you know, because so obviously this is what the person was saying, so obviously connected to X, Y and Z that you are talking about. And I this this kind of the leadership she brought it to each like three different people in the leadership, right? Interesting, individually, and, huh? Yeah, and and finally, um, finally, our we just kind of clarified very specifically instead of just kind of like mm, just kind of saying, "No, nah, nah, that's not really not what we're doing here." We just said, "Look, our focus is on voting in America. That's what this is, mm -hmm. and we know that there are points of disagreement among anybody who travels or does work with us around climate, around immigration, around healthcare, yep. around Israel and yep. Gaza. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Now, do we, are we all walking the same general way? Generally, yes, we are. Yep. But there's still points of disagreement. That's not what this trip is about, though." All right. Is mm -hmm. the, it right? And and that person accepted it. They understood. They understood. But Good. that 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 eyes on the prizeness that common power has about voting is absolutely part of what makes us us. And it and is it allows us to work across some of our you know very real issue differences and and generational differences. Yeah, and that's I fight for that all the time. You know that we like we we have things that pull on our heartstrings sometimes, and I have to make sure that that we don't travel down those paths and that these are we've taken action that's been different than how i feel personally mm -hmm. you know i want to get involved in stuff and i you know i vote i vote the way that i vote but i um i leave that at home sometimes because that's that's not how you build community and you know there's other kinds of things that, that are connected to that you know when you maintain focus you also you also don't spend a bunch of unnecessary dollars yeah and time yeah Chasing every single, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that they say about the reason why fair fight um, mm. collapsed a little bit is because they chase too many things, you know, the, you, you've you got to stay in your lane. You've got to keep your powder dry for the stuff that just pops up politically. So I'm proud of that, man. I like, I like, I think that our model and our focus is proven to be the right way forward.
I totally agree. And and certainly it's been something that you and I and all the directors have 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 made as a priority, but you have really led the way on that. So I really appreciate that. Let me let's finish this up because I know Pr Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal is is there, right? And yes. so so like you guys on the same plane coming out there or what's the story? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, she was like, hey, come sit by me, Charles. And I was like, cool, yeah, I'll be with you. No, um, yeah, so we, she was at the um, the debate watch party and uh, co-hosted by the Dems out in Washington. And she's on the mic and she's like, you know, and I'm going to Georgia. And then, you know, I was like, me too. And she was like, <laughs> yeah, we're going to, we're, we're going to the same thing. Um, I, got, I got a text from somebody else in Washington State. And they're like, oh, man, I'm supposed to go. I'm sorry, I'm not going. But yeah, I think that the, she's really a respected, she's a respected member of Congress and she's also like very specifically a leader nationally on the AA and HBI front. Mm, okay. And so anytime there's something big going on, you know, her presence, it means a lot. It actually pulls in people. Uh, you know, she is, she's Indian American herself. And so, Kamala Harris's identity has brought has brought uh, Pramila to the forefront a little more. So, you know, Washington State is just representing everywhere. Uh, Suzanne Del Bene is running the DCCC push on the front lines. Yeah. I mean, Jai Paul is Washington the head of the State? Con Congressional Black yeah. Progressive Caucus. All right. Yeah. So, and Jai Paul's, yeah, the head of, and, and then um, Patty Murray's number three. Patty Murray? Yeah. 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 So, these Washington are all women, State too. Is, yeah. Yes. Yes. Washington State is pretty, you know, it's pretty. I, 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 I imagine them seeing us and being like, "Hell yeah, that's right." One of the strongest organizing groups in America is coming out of Seattle. So that's what's right. the, what? What exactly are you? Are you? Are are we working today, or are we arriving today? Our team and then today's tomorrow? today's meetings. Today's meetings. Um, there's a big spin dig tonight that I'm going to go to. That has a bunch of folks there. Um, this is folks from the API Victory Fund, some folks from DC, and some local elected officials. Uh, so I'm going to go to that, and Pramila will be there. And then there's a big canvassing launch tomorrow morning, and Pramila is going to be speaking there, and some other people. So I'll be I'll be there too, and that's where our volunteers are going to organize and then go knock on doors for a few hours, five six hours, something like that. Okay. So that's what we're doing in Georgia. And then they're going to be here again. They're going to do, they're going to knock on doors um, on Sunday as well. So we are, we're providing a bunch of the organizing muscle for this weekend. Yeah. And then just to finish up this podcast. So we have another Georgia trip that you've referenced that is, I think not this coming weekend, but the weekend of the yeah. the, the 18th and 19th. Are you looking at 20th. a calendar or is somebody yeah, I am. attacking I'm looking, you? you? I'm looking <laughs> I'm looking you, at our calendar, man. You look like you're in danger. And you're like looking over <laughs> your shoulder. Do I need to call somebody to be in the podcast? And call? Uh, yes. At, yeah. Look at this Puyo, calendar Puyo. over here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is a notorious calendar right there. Physical calendar <laughs> only <laughs> exists in one place. And then the little wall. one next to it, the little one next to it is next year. What? Okay. Oh, sure. How can you even see that? What do you mean? How the do little one? small box. How do you write in the little box? <clears throat> well, I have pretty small hands. Don't give away your secrets. You're right. You're right. Don't give away all your secrets. I understand. So the yes. the, the weekend yeah, will the... be there'll be a, there'll be fifty out here at least at least fifty out here okay. in Georgia with Puya. All right, and where will you be that weekend? Just I'm just gathering information here because that where might be am I going to be that weekend? That might be a weekend when I'm I'm on out there. I'm not sure. I just I might need to. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, re oh wow. Uh. Where am I going to be? What's that date? Can you see from where you are? Yeah, it's a Friday the really? 19th. Friday the 19th. Wow. Wow. Okay. No, no, wait, no, no, no. Wait, wait. That's July. Sorry. Sorry. Friday the 18th. <laughs> Uh, Saturday the 19th. Sunday the 20th. Okay. I'm going to have to verify this. I feel like you're just making it up. I, yeah. I think right now I'm I'm not sure where I'm going to be. But um It'll 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 likely be in one of the key states, either the Blue Wall or um, Arizona. Okay, well, I don't know for an Arizona that weekend, but okay. But I'm just I want to oh, put really? I can... want <laughs> want to put on the the table RV. You and me, three days in an RV, 
pumping up people, all right, knocking doors, you and me. Okay. All right. That's good. That That's good. And by you, you're looking at the audience, right? Is that what you're saying? You're, you're saying somebody from the CP Nation is going to join you. No, I mean you. Time. You, okay? Oh, yeah. Let's make it Let's make it a sweepstakes. One random person. Or three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing here? Tell me exactly what you're doing here. Are you, like, positioning this as, like, a something can, like, it's a special thing people can. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you donate a certain amount of money, you can win a seat on the RV with David <laughs> when he does his trip sometime b during the election. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm making plans to, for my son to go to California that weekend and visit okay. me and my wife who will be down there. So I'm, I'm, that's the weekend I'm, that, I, that I'm starting to look at as, as, and I'm hopefully thinking about trying to do two, but that first, that one is the one that looks good. So you just tell me a uh, boss where you want me. All right. It's <laughs> good. All right. All right. We will. We will. I will. Okay. Good stuff, man. Okay. Thanks. We're going to bring Georgia back. I just, the, the last thing on Georgia is that um, the thing I conversation I had this morning, long meeting over coffee was that we need to, I think we need to set up shop here. Um, we need what does to, that mean? What does that mean? Well, we need to have you live in Georgia. I think <laughs> yeah, I'm announcing it here on the pod. No, we, we need, we, we, whatever we end up doing in Georgia, this, these next couple of weekends that we're here will be to start something that feels more permanent Whoa! where okay. the folks that are a part of our community that are already here can use us as a pathway towards more evergreen organizing in the state, because that is what it's missing. So that's a, that's a little preview for everybody, but common power is going to show up differently in Georgia post-election. So think like 2025 um, and a few other States. So I'll come up, y'all. We got plans. We got plans. That sounds like a great anchor space there in the southeast. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. man. Well, you know, go have drinks with the dignitaries and everything. All right. And uh get yeah. our folks out to work. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Mark. Right. Take care. See ya. Bye.